Hey guys, we're back here with another repair video. Today, um, <laughs> by back by popular demand, as my first video of this repair had quite good uh, sort of views and tra traffic to it. So we're doing another one. Um, I'll clip a little video now just to show you guys the error we're seeing is 160-1400 on the Wii U game system and this one's a pretty easy fix so we're looking at these two fuses and fuses pass current through so we should hear a beep and we can hear the beep on the CM10 and then looking at CM9 we have no beep on one of the sides so we're gonna take this off and just run two jumpers so just to kind of zoom out for anyone that's new and doesn't know a lot about this uh, we've taken the console part, which you can find many guides on YouTube showing that, how to take the console part. And we are looking, this is the plugin. This is the plugin for your disk drive. So there's a flex cable that goes into here. And we can see I'm down on the opposite end of where the power plugs in near the this is the USB at the front so at the front sort of left side in my orientation and then we follow up again this is going to be your flex connector for your disk drive and it's not the disk drive that's the issue because as you could see we tested the CM10 this one and CM9 this one and we found that there is no continuity between this side and this side on this specific fuse you can get these fuses and replace them however I've fixed this where only one fuse side is the issue not both but just one is the issue you can run jumpers without any issues and I haven't had any of those consoles come back yet. The only one I've had come back is where both fuses were gone and I did the jumpers on both and it came back no longer working after a certain amount of time. Now, that having been said, if one only is working and one only is bad, you can do the jumper fix that I'm gonna do today. So we're going to start by removing the fuse very quickly. I actually haven't even taken it out of the plastic case, so I'm just going to make sure I do this fairly quickly because I don't want to melt anything. That's off. Now we're going to flux and tin the area. Now I'm using a bit of a thicker wire. This is from an ethernet cable. 
So I think it's about 14 or 16 AWG. But you could just use your thin copper jumper wire generic stuff as well. I like this because it's a little bit thicker and a little more heavy duty so I don't have to worry as much. Once I've done the job I know it's going to be fairly solid. That looks good. Trim it. We'll do both, then we'll test. Add a little bit more, just on the tip here. solid. Now we're going to trim it. And we'll do a quick test. Let's get this fan off. And let's clean the area. So I know most of you guys at home might not have the scope, but you can pick up just sort of like a table standing, very, very cheap um, microscope with a screen, with like a little four inch screen on Amazon for about 40 to $60. So that you can zoom into stuff like this and see what you're working with. This one is an HDMI off alley. And you can get it for about a hundred to one hundred and fifty dollars, uh, and that's without the stand. Though you will need a stand. Some are available with stand for about one hundred and fifty, and that'll give you the HDMI throughput that I'm showing you guys today. Okay, so diode mode. And we're good there. And we're good there. Just check the solidity of these. They're pretty solid. I don't think I'm too concerned. These don't have to do a whole lot other than just connect those two pads. So let's get it back on the table and put it together. And we'll show you guys if the error is resolved. One last thing I like to do just to make sure that nothing messes with this. We're going to take some coating, some UV solder mask and we're going to dab it on there Whoa. quite a bit there but that's okay sorry my fingers are in the way here Try 
try not to put too much on. Otherwise it won't cure very well. So that's probably pretty good. We're all done here. So now we're going to take it over and just test it. Let's get here. here but that is okay because we just need a quick test let's swap this the camera view Now, to test it, we don't actually have to put it all back together fully. As you can see here, you know, I just had this just set on the side. Uh, you do have to take these cables out of the tape so that you can get enough room, but you don't have to take this off fully for this repair, which makes it kind of nice because tackling, I don't know whoever's taking this apart, but tackling, putting it back together can be tricky just because of how the little plastics underneath they just they're just kind of sitting there there's no clip or anything so of course we want to make sure the disk drive is actually plugged in otherwise we'll get a different error and it's funny that this error comes up for can't detect the disk drive when it's essentially the the disk drive is connected and everything's working fine. The disk drive itself has no issues. But when the fuse is gone, it can no longer detect that there is a disk drive. And that's moreover the improper wording. Maybe a PR. PR issue, possibly. Okay. But anyways, let's get this guy swapped. And then I can show you the error is no longer there. And there's the Wii U turning on. Oh, we don't have the battery in. Uh, may or may not cause an error. But we've already gotten farther than it got before. Because it used to just go to that error. 
Okay, let's put this... We'll just put this battery in just in case. Oh, it won't even sit in, actually. And now we have to actually plug in this because I don't think it's charged at all. Yeah, their gamepad seems to be dead right now. Oh, I forgot I do have side chargers on this thing too, isn't that nice? Just get that back in there. Okay. So, let's turn the gamepad on. And we're not going to set up the internet, we don't need to. Let's make sure there's no